What's up guys, Sean here, and today we're going to talk about John Oliver lying for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. But before we get started, I do want to say thank you guys so much for 1500 subscribers on my second channel. I really do appreciate that so many of you have decided to jump over there and give me a head start on that venture, and I hope to continue producing content both on this channel and on that channel well into the future. John Oliver is the host of HBO's Last Week Tonight, which, if you can believe this, is a late night comedy show with a left wing political perspective which seems so odd in today's media. For those of you who don't know, there was a time where a guy named Jon Stewart used to host The Daily Show on Comedy Central, and at one point, according to polling, The Daily Show was considered the most trusted source in news. Now, because Jon Stewart was on the left, and this was considered by polling to be the most trustworthy way to deliver news, Every network now features a left-wing political comedy late-night show. And while most of those shows are unfunny propaganda and generally trash because they forget that comedy is the most important part of a late-night comedy show, I have to give credit where credit is due. John Oliver does stand above the pack because he actually sometimes remembers to be funny on his late night comedy show. However, the fact that his show does feature some comedic moments doesn't make it any less of a propaganda show than something like Samantha Bee or The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, which nobody has ever laughed at in the history of ever. While the Brits were waking up in the ruins of their nation and saying, oh God, what have we done? A lot of Americans were looking over and saying, oh God, what are we about to do? And my case in point for last week tonight being nothing but left wing propaganda is their recent segment on the Green New Deal and John Oliver multiple contradictory lies to cover for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The Green New Deal, you now know that everyone's talking about it and it was booed at a Trump rally, therefore it is A, famous and B, probably good. Now, as I said multiple times on this channel, it is fine to be on the left, it is fine to have left-wing political views, and it's fine that John Oliver supports the Green New Deal. What's not fine is presenting yourself as an authority and then lying directly to your audience. The Green New Deal! <laughs> has been famously polarizing. On one hand, all these senators running for president co-sponsored it. On the other hand, Republicans have been foaming at the mouth to criticize it for all the crazy provisions that they insist it contains. The Green New Deal doesn't even mention the word cows or airplanes. In fact, while it's sometimes discussed like it's filled with specific programs to fight climate change, it isn't. It is a non-binding resolution that very briefly sets out some extremely aggressive goals. The whole Green New Deal is just 14 pages long. So John Oliver starts by pointing out that the Green New Deal resolution, which was voted down unanimously in the Senate, is a non-binding resolution that actually sets up a series of targets or goals but doesn't have any legislative specifics. Now this is true on the surface, but what John Oliver goes on to do is minimize the accompanying documents that Ocasio-Cortez put out with the Green New Deal, which did have specifics. Some self-inflicted wounds. The reason you hear hamburgers come up so much is that AOC's office mistakenly sent an early draft of an FAQ to reporters containing language like, we set a goal to get to net zero rather than zero emissions in 10 years because we aren't sure that we'll be able to fully get rid of farting cows and airplanes that fast. So here Oliver goes with the Ocasio-Cortez lie that the FAQ, which had detailed specific proposals related to the Green New Deal, and was released on the same exact day that the Green New Deal was proposed, because this was a coordinated release of documents, shouldn't really be considered because it was just a draft that was accidentally sent out to the media. Of course, it was not only accidentally sent out to the media, it was also put on Ocasio-Cortez's website, so I guess it was accidentally put there too. Now this is provably false in a number of ways. In fact, if you go into the metadata of this document, you'll find that it came from top members of Ocasio-Cortez's staff and not a low-level staff member who accidentally sent it out the way it was said by Ocasio-Cortez after the fact. You guys issued an FAQ. It had some things that people yeah. thought were ridiculous and radical, yeah, like totally. anyone that was uh, unable or unwilling to work would mm -hmm. be guaranteed a job. Yeah, the yeah. FAQ was withdrawn and said it was preliminary, a draft. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of fight about that. Like, yeah. do you... Do you think you guys rolled it out the right way? Did you well, bring it on any on yourself? What I will say is that 
there, I definitely had a staffer that had a very bad day at work. <laughs> and now John Oliver knows this is a weak excuse, which is why seconds later, he comes up with another excuse to explain the provisions in the FAQ. And years, because we aren't sure that we'll be able to fully get rid of farting cows and airplanes that fast, which is clearly supposed to be a joke, but it wasn't a great time to attempt one. So according to John Oliver, this was just a rough draft of an FAQ that was never really meant to be sent out to the media and posted on Ocasio-Cortez's website. But also, it was an obvious joke that was never meant to be taken seriously. You know, because when you announce a giant piece of legislation that you've centered your campaign around, you have joke provisions in your FAQ draft that is published in coordination with that announcement. Because, you know, that's that's just how you do things, right? It gave an opening for these idiots to pretend the Green New Deal was all about hamburger stealing when it is not. Although, for the record, there are real environmental issues surrounding cattle farming. Uh okay, so now according to Oliver, it's not only a draft that was never meant to actually be sent out, but it's also an obvious joke that was intentionally sent out. And on top of that, it's a legitimate serious point that should be addressed by the Green New Deal. Yeah. A little bit of advice for you aspiring liars out there. One excuse is enough. When you tell three contradictory excuses, it makes it obvious that you're not interested in telling the truth. Now you might think I'm spending a lot of time discussing these three contradictory excuses, but if you watch the whole segment, you'll realize that a large portion of this is dedicated to discrediting Republicans for disingenuously attacking Ocasio-Cortez based around the idea that they're intentionally taking something that's not related to the Green New Deal and using that to bludgeon Ocasio-Cortez. That is not the case, and the assertions that Oliver is making are completely false. He spends a significant amount of time making fun of Republicans for mentioning hamburgers under the premise that the Green New Deal nor Ocasio-Cortez have ever mentioned hamburgers. Because it gave an opening for these idiots to pretend the Green New Deal was all about hamburger stealing when it is not. The reason you hear hamburgers come up so much is that AOC's office mistakenly sent an early draft of an FAQ to reporters. Now, of course, the problem with the idea that Republicans are just pulling these hamburger talking points out of nowhere is that Ocasio-Cortez very famously and on video mention hamburgers in connection with the Green New Deal. Twitter mentions, I'm getting a lot of references about cow farts. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's a reference to your Green New Deal. Yes. Can you explain that for us? Yes. In the deal, what we talk about is, I mean, and it's, it's true, is that we need to take a look at factory farming. Mm -hmm. You know, period. It's wild. Yeah. Listen, we gotta address factory farming. Maybe we shouldn't be eating a hamburger for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, let's keep okay, it slow real. Down. This entire segment is flooded with errors and ignorance on behalf of John Oliver. For instance, when he names a number of solutions for climate change, he mentions nuclear power. Uh, building cities more densely, phasing out HFCs, developing lab-grown meat, building better nuclear plants. Now, it's really weird to mention nuclear power in the solutions category in relation to your support for the Green New Deal, because proponents of the Green New Deal and Ocasio-Cortez herself and the FAQ and all the associated documents with the Green New Deal are anti-nuclear energy and actually call for shutting down nuclear plants, not building and advancing the technology of them. Now, maybe you think John Oliver isn't intentionally lying. Maybe he just doesn't know and isn't up to date about the news surrounding the Green New Deal, its release, and how it was botched. And normally I would give somebody the benefit of the doubt, but not in this case, because at one point in this video, he actually praises Justin Trudeau for pushing legislation while lying about it. Straightforward, carbon tax, which just adds a surcharge to activities that emit carbon. The problem there is mostly the word tax, which has become a dirty word. And Trudeau desperately tried not to use the word tax, instead calling it a price on pollution. And when he slipped up once, just look how people reacted. What we're also guaranteeing is uh, that this uh, tax, uh, this uh, pricing... Uh, price Now, Oliver goes on to say that he supports this specific carbon tax scheme that was implemented in Canada, because unlike other carbon tax schemes, the money generated from the tax is given back to the people. And in fact, the bottom 70% of the people get more money under the tax scheme than is taken from them. How do you put a price on carbon and make things more expensive without harming the people who can least afford it? And what Canada's doing to address this is actually pretty simple. Very basically, they're taking the money they collect 
and giving it back to their citizens. They're doing this by pooling the money gathered by increased fees on things like gas and heat, uh, dividing it up and sending it back to taxpayers so that the rebates in Canada are anticipated to exceed the increased costs for about 70% of households with lowest, lowest income households seeing the most benefits from the policy, which is great. Which is really weird because the alleged goal of this carbon tax system is to disincentivize use of fossil fuels. But if the bottom 70% of the people being taxed by this actually receive more money than they pay in taxes, how are they disincentivized? Hmm. It's almost as if, and let me know if I'm going completely off base here, that Canada's tax system and the tax system that John Oliver wants implemented in the United States is more about redistributing wealth than it is about discouraging use of carbon-based fuels. And maybe that giant portion of the segment that John Oliver spent trying to discredit Republicans for saying things like this? This is what Stalin dreamt about but never achieved. What are you talking about? Come off as completely disingenuous when you realize that the point of this segment is for John Oliver to propose a wealth redistribution plan under the guise of fighting climate change. But hey, maybe me and conservatives and libertarians are just being a little bit crazy when we point out that people who are anti-capitalism and call themselves socialists are proposing socialist policies and passing them off as environmentalist policies. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about this, the Green New Deal, in the comments down below. If you like this video, then show me by leaving me a like. Subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social medias, support me on PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. This has been me talking about John Oliver's Green New Deal segment. Till next time.